You're listening to The Invisible Addiction, a podcast series investigating problem gambling in the UK. In this episode, I speak with Katie Reynolds-Jones, Head of Marketing and Communications at GamStop. I wanted to find out about GamStop and the service they provide to people wanting to stop gambling. How does GamStop work? How easy is it to register? Does using GamStop affect your credit rating? Alongside her colleagues, Katie does a thankless task, helping thousands of problem gamblers in the UK. And the GamStop website is www.gamstop.co.uk. Finally, if you haven't already, do check out theinvisibleaddiction.com with links to podcasts, vlogs, blog posts, and more importantly, support networks in the UK for people struggling with gambling problems. Without further ado, here is the conversation between Katie and I. Enjoy. Okay, so joining us on the other end of the line today is Katie Reynolds Jones from GamStop. She's head of marketing and communications for uh, GamStop, like I mentioned. And um, well, it's it's a real uh, privilege to have her on the other end of the line and for her to give her uh, her much valued time up um, to just talk a bit more about problem gambling and the work that GamStop do. Uh, so, Katie, first of all, how are you? How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you, Alex, and thank you very much for having me on your podcast. It's it's great to uh, to be part of what you're doing. I think what you're doing is fantastic. You've obviously uh, raised awareness uh, to a lot of people and anything that uh, gets the, the conversation going and lets well from my point of view people like ourselves talk about the, the work that's been that's going on here uh, is a great opportunity so my thanks are to you really oh you do like to flatter yeah. <laughs> no but thank, it's very it's um as i say it's a real privilege to have you on and um i hope i hope you don't mind but today i'd like it to be sort of more conversational as opposed to you know like a strict kind of interview um sure. does that sound okay yeah, absolutely fine. That's perfect. We'll, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, go with your lead. Okay, fantastic. So, um, so obviously we'd like to meander through some topics and stuff. And, and really the main aim is, as I say, for listeners to understand a bit more about what GamStop uh, provides. Uh, but before we get to that point, I don't know if you want to maybe spend, I don't know, a minute or two, just maybe talking about uh, your background and, and experience. Sure, yeah. Well, as you said, my name's uh, Katie Reynolds-Jones. I'm based in the north of England, which is where GamStop um, are are based. Uh, I joined GamStop two and a half years ago now, back in February um, 2018. And um, just trying to get my dates right there. <laughs> Feels all a blur since lockdown. And, uh, uh, and I came in to um, help with a very small team uh, set up to uh, create a self-exclusion scheme. And uh, before that, I had been working for St. Michael's Hospice, which is a local hospice here up here in Harrogate, um, helping in their uh, bereavement team with some fundraising, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, before that, a very long and winding career in uh, marketing, uh, communications, general operations, etc. But uh, really, uh, this was a great opportunity for me to carry on working in uh, in a, an important uh, third sector organisation that was doing some some good out there to try to help people who've got a problem with uh, gambling. In this case, online gambling. Uh-huh, there we go. So, um, so excuse me. Ter- terrible, terrible research from me, by the way. But don't worry. Um, is, is GamStop been around? How long has it been around for? Do you know yes. How, yeah. So that's absolutely fine. Um, GamStop. We was set up um, as the national. Um, well, GamStop is the is the trading name, if you like, for the national online um, self exclusion scheme, Limited, which was it was set up to take forward a requirement by the DCMS um, and the Gambling Commission together to um, provide a, a national online self-exclusion scheme, a sort of a one-stop shop, if you like, for um, alongside, that would run alongside the uh, individual online self-exclusion schemes that all the gambling operators at that time were mandated to um, to have on their on their each of their sites so you can imagine um, if you wanted to uh, stop online gambling or exclude yourself from online gambling at the pr- prior to gamstop you would need to 
go into each website that you were registered with and find the self-exclusion button and then exclude. And well, I mean, there are an awful lot of uh, gambling sites out there and uh, that has also grown in the last two years too, but um, it was a tricky task for someone to do. So this was a way of making it a one-stop shop, making all those online self, all those individual self-exclusion schemes come together. And uh, that happened in sort of 2017, so not that long ago. And then April um, the 26th, 2018, I think I'm right, uh, we launched as a multi-operator scheme. So we had uh, a lot of, uh, of the online operators uh, integrated with GAMSTOP, but not all of them. And then in March, on March 31st of this year, so two years later, we became a licensed condition, which meant that well, now means that every single UK licensed operator must be a part of GAMSTOP, which means that we now have every, every operator and can protect people from all online gambling companies in the UK. Does that make sense? That does make sense. Yeah, I mean, um, I was going to say, because... It, I suppose like coming from my side as a problem gambler I can I can kind of understand that it would be quite difficult like for a problem gambler to go through to a website you know an individual website it's like going, walking through yeah. a front door isn't it and, and kind of going oh, I need to kind of self-exclude but the temptation is always there um absolutely kind of it's not on. an it wasn't an ideal scenario in some cases i think people still do use um individual self-exclusion schemes if they're only on one site but it's not an ideal scenario getting somebody to walk back into the very area that um not physically walk back in virtually walk back into the area that has caused them the the issues in the past so gamstop sits completely separately um it's a site that uh, i don't know if you've actually visited the site alex i'm not actually too sure of you yes. if your sort of in, interaction with uh, with gamstop but it's a very clear clean site and very different from a sort of an online casino site definitely and the sports betting sites are yeah. Are also, um, just very different from the GAMSTOP sort of straightforward, simple click a button here and you start your registration process. Yeah, it's um, it's nice actually. It's, it makes a change all the colours. Um, I'm forever with the invisible addiction. I'm forever sort of trying to look at um, you know, like designing posters, and it's all about you know the, the, the palette and stuff like that. So yeah, <laughs> no, a nice sort of welcome blue and black. It's nice. That's for, right. Yeah. For, for we tried to. We did do a bit of uh, of some focus groups actually right at the beginning, just to see what people uh, were wanting. You know what they what they liked um, in terms of this site. So it has got a little bit of science behind it, but the idea, the real idea, was. Do you know what it's got to look completely different from a casino site so it's a sort of a little bit of a haven people could go and do exactly what they need to do and then forget about it yeah that's um that's great i mean so how how how, how are you kind of going about sort of spread obviously obviously through these podcasts i'm sure you're spreading yes. awareness, but, <laughs> but is it is it um I don't know, do, do you tend to advertise or, you know? Yeah, we're just, we're just starting to raise awareness, Alex. We're, um, it, for the first two years, because we weren't offering a full or the, the full service because we didn't have all the operators integrated, we were very much sort of feeling our way. I mean, I'm not sure if I've told you, um, I, maybe I have, I can't remember, but we've got over 154,000 people wow. registered with GAMSTOP as of today or yesterday so um we have we get a lot of people who have found our site um already the first two years we very much relied on um either word of mouth or forums gamcare were great um at promoting the work that we were doing for example and um we we are on the, the footer of all the gambling websites i've just told you about so that if somebody does want to to join we we are very much there we do get quite a lot of traffic that way um but now since since march 31st which just happened to coincide with um with uh, uh lockdown uh, we've started a twitter feed social uh, some social network um stuff and some advertising um we're looking what we'd really like to do is start um promoting ourselves as part of um what we call a self-help toolkit so whereas we're really comfortable and confident that gamstop do a, a great job in, in one area of stopping people 
and I'm more than happy to talk to you about exactly the mechanism of what Gamstop does, but um, we see it as part of a process, not just the silver bullet, if you like, not just, oh, what, right, get Gamstop on and um, that's you done, tick, mm -hmm. you're fine. Mm -hmm. That's definitely not how we would promote ourselves. And so what we'd really love to do and are looking at doing is promoting ourselves alongside other um, pieces of kit, some blocking software, which we think works really, really well with Gamstop. We think um, looking at your bank accounts um, and seeing whether they provide you with some transactional blocking equipment. Um, lots of the, the uh, challenger banks do, I know, and some of the other banks are starting to, to, to get that um, kit in, uh, in place. So this is all really, really good because it's a layered approach and it creates this ability for somebody to say, right, I've done that, I've done that, I've done that, and now I've got the space to try and find the right help and support mm -hmm. that I might need to help me with whatever issue I have. And you're a much better place to talk about that than I am, but the issues that I have, how, do, how will I tackle those to try to stop um, what I need to do because it's not just about putting practical barriers in place we all know that it's about someone deciding and making time for themselves to get the help they need yeah I think that's I think that's so important I think um I think w whenever I was in my addiction it was all, almost became this thing of like so desperately searching to sort of just try and stop um and a bit <laughs> Rather being being quite ignorant or naive at the time, I, I self excluded from casinos. It was about two thousand seventeen. Yeah, just before. Up, yeah, yeah, right, just before you kind of yeah. So it was like um, I think it was the National Gambling Helpline. I'm so it was such a haze, but I rang them up and I got sort of excluded from um, all land based casinos. And um, but then in the back of my mind, I was kind of thinking, ha ha, but I can still go and gamble online. And um, yeah. And that was the kind of the thing. And so it sounds great that if you can, like you've just described, if you can put stuff in place that has that structure, that blanket, like, boom, you know, not only yeah. GAMSTOP, but uh, is it GAM? Ban is that the yeah Gamban is blocking yeah. software that works really well um, on devices. Um, so it, it it sort of does uh, another job, but again, it's that really really lovely bit of um, cross layering. So we're blocking the self, so the whatever you've registered, we block those details um, wherever you happen to be, um, and Gambans or uh, blocking software in, in, in total will block the device from ever being able to look at gambling websites, that the device you're on. So again, that has a broader, because it can block against um, some of these, uh, I th I'm pretty sure, I mean, I'm not an expert, but um, I'm pretty sure that it blocks things like loot boxes and, you know, some of the younger types of games that, uh, because they're not part of the UK Gambling Commission license conditions, we, we don't block, but um, so, so the two together are absolutely fantastic. Um, and then as you rightly say, we would also uh, um, signpost people to Moses, which is the scheme that looks after uh, people uh, who, who want to block themselves from visiting local or multiple bookies. Uh, the Sense that helps with uh, casinos, as you mentioned earlier, it's probably the one that you joined. Uh, there's um, uh, uh, arcades and bingo as well. So there's quite, I think, back to his arcades and the bingos as well. So they each have their own multi operator self exclusion schemes. So it's just a question of we've just got to show people what to do and then they can pick what's relevant for them. But, but ultimately, everybody needs to get a little bit of help, I would say. Yeah. Um, just even if it's just a phone call and a well done, you've you've done the right thing what can we do now where, where are your areas of weakness and, and we would always always suggest you either ring the national gambling helpline or um, get in touch with gam care or there's some brilliant clinics up certainly in the in yorkshire where i'm from there's the northern gambling clinic uh, i think um uh, a chap called matt gaskell i think you might have spoken to he runs those and he's just doing the most tremendous job um there as well so there is help, there is support, and there are these practical tools. We just need to get the word out to make sure that anybody needs them or, or anybody who knows somebody who might need them, needs them, knows where to go, knows how to, how to action this. And, and that's a job still we've got to do, definitely. So you're helping with this, Alex. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> it definitely makes sense for a one-stop shop. I definitely like the idea of that because, like, for me, 
you know just observing but it, it's like yeah there, there's obviously all these little nuggets of gold that you can go and um you can go and get help um in your local area nationally or whatever but it, it seems great if there's there was to be one place such as gamstock which would be able to kind of signpost you to different places and stuff like that yeah we, we we do a bit of signposting there's a bit of work still to do there but uh, we try to you know make sure that we give the right information we've got a signposting area on our website but uh, you know there's there's lots we can do in this area and uh, and we know that we, that's sort of our next focus now that we've you know i've got this um national accreditation on uh, mandated to, to actually have everybody integrated which is really crucial and something that we're really looking mm. looking forward to getting and working very hard towards <laughs> getting in the last couple of years now we've got that we're really sort of looking at how we can best promote it so yeah. absolutely that's great that's great um so I just wondered, cause was it, I think I might have crossed over you there and, and some, I don't know if the podcast listeners will be able to pick it up, but I, did you say 154,000? I did. Uh, we've got, um, yes, I mean, I can give you the, the this is high tech podcasting. <laughs> I'm now going <laughs> to a look at exactly yeah, look, what, what it is. Look, guys, yeah. <laughs> no, you can't see this, but I am going to just have a look at we have, um, as of right now, 154,545 uh, people who have registered with GAMSTOP. Um, so some of them uh, may have come off because they've, uh, as you may know, um, we have three types of exclusion periods in terms of they can choose three different uh, time frames. They can have a six month, a one year or a five year um, period of exclusion so uh they may have come off um in that time lots and lots then re you know rejoin so we do see that a lot um, but since it first started that's how many people have registered with the scheme um nice. and so it does continue to grow at around about 170 people every day wow wow that's yeah. amazing that's it's great that so many people are getting help and um you know yeah. reaching out and stuff i mean um, I don't know if this is commercially sensitive or not, but um, oh, I'll I, uh, tell you. <laughs> oh yeah, <I'm> just... <laughs> I always let you know. I have a good old probe, but um, <sighs> is uh, it is it mostly male to female? Uh, are we talking? You know, because I think I think you know it's it's maybe just it's a massive generalisation, but you know, one one presumes it would be mostly blokes that are uh, um, you know. Uh, you know, have have problem problems gambling, but are you are you seeing a whole range of ages there or? or yeah, you know? that's not commercially sensitive. I can tell. <laughs> 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 that's okay. We don't actually. We do see uh, the age ranges um, because obviously we're asking for people's date of birth when they register, so we can see, and it broadly follows the pattern that you would expect. So younger, um, not obviously we don't. We start. At, we actually start at sixteen because of the national lottery. Um, but uh, we tend to see that sort of 18 to 25 age bracket uh, being quite high um, and then again quite a bulky lot in the in the middle age and then it's sort of dropping off uh, towards the end but remember we're sort of online uh, gambling self-exclusion so possibly if you ask the Moses scheme the book is it might be a slightly different age um, age range um and i can i can obviously i haven't got the stats right in front of me now alex because i've only got one access to that figure but <laughs> i i can find out for you but it's uh, it wouldn't be it doesn't it, that's about right in terms of male female we don't actually ask them when they register whether they are male or female mm -hmm. we do ask what their what their title is so you can kind of get an idea from that uh, but um from our uh, contact center and from just anecdotally yes we would say that we do have more men than women who have registered but that's not to say we don't have women because we certainly do and we definitely want to try to raise awareness about gamstop to women in fact this, we're doing a bit of work on that at the moment mm -hmm. um because we think it is so important that that gamstop is there for for women who might be coming out of lockdown might be might have you know developed some sort of um not even really an addiction but a sort of uh, uh more an affinity with oh i'm i'm inside all the time I'm, I'm used to this bingo thing that's being advertised all the time in daytime television it seems mm -hmm. having watched it for the first time in about 30 years of working um 
so uh, we are very keen to try to make sure that that women know about Gamstop as well. And of course, it is totally available for for anybody over the age of sixteen. Um, so I just it's you know I, I was doing some googling earlier, and and I just sort of googled Gamstop earlier, and. I don't know if you ever you get onto Google and they always have like a related like sh uh, search. Oh question. yes. Or sort of like other what other people asked, and um, yeah, it, no. was, it was interesting because um, some of the questions I think I just put in like Gamstop UK or something like that, mm. and um, it, the first question was, "Does Gamstop affect credit rating?" Um, <gasps> Gosh, Alex, that's it. I mean, I get a lot yeah. of questions, but that wasn't the question I thought you were going to ask. No, 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 that's, no. That's, was... that's a good one. Yeah. And it is, we, ha we do have it and it doesn't at all. Now, the reason people, mm -hmm. I think, ask it is because when, uh, when you join Gamstop, when you register online, because we're an online um, registration service and we're trying to make it um, as straightforward for somebody as possible so that we recognise that, and this happens a lot actually that uh, people will just decide at two in the morning very or very early in the next morning so five six in the morning do you know what i've had enough i want to join gamstop and i want to do it now so the ski the, the online process is is online just that and it takes about two or three minutes and part of that process is an id verification checking system as opposed to um sending us your verification details so sending us a picture of your passport or whatever which we can do but obviously that takes longer and we realize we've only got a sort of a little almost like a, a window of opportunity where these people decide this is what i want to do we've got that moment of clarity so anyway we do this id and v process which we have to do to make sure that people are who they say they are otherwise we could get you registering some mate for a joke or me registering my i don't know <laughs> i'm trying to think of a, a famous pop star just because we happen to know their address and it can get really messy so we do have to do id checks and as such we then they we tend it to a third party to check that that person is who they say they are and they ask answer questions like you would do if you were um, applying for a mortgage or if you're applying for a loan for a car um, and so those questions appear and people, generally speaking, pass them and, and they get onto Gamstop and that's fine. But some people have asked us, well, does that affect my credit rating because we're asking these questions? And it absolutely doesn't. Um, is this what's called a soft footprint. So the person whose credit it is will see that he has or she has ask Gam Gamstop has been asking a question but nobody else no other third party sees that information so it doesn't affect credit there we all. go there we go that's brilliant heard that's it brilliant. from me yeah <laughs> <laughs> i heard it from the top yeah uh. <laughs> um uh and another question again so just uh there's another one that says well can i cancel my Gamstop exclusion and i think well i i, I want to say the answer is yes you can but it's or can't you? I don't know. Can yeah? There we go. I should have. Can't you? Uh, st stick to the initial <laughs> question. I'm why am I trying to answer it for you? Can I cancel my Gamstop exclusion? I'm loving that you're throwing the questions that Google throws at me <laughs> for, to, from Google. I love that. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, and they're great questions as well. Um, no, you can't cancel your Gamstop exclusion until the end of your the period that you've chosen. Um, so uh, if you have chosen six months you can't come back to us in two months time and say do you know what I've changed my mind uh, I don't want Gam to stop anymore because actually it's we feel it's our duty to keep that exclusion in place for the duration of the period that you have you have chosen because otherwise you know we are dealing in a vulnerable sector we are dealing with people who have potentially you know, addictive behavior have addictions and we feel that actually if they've they've asked us to stop them from doing from um, online betting in this way coming to gamstop then it is our duty to keep them on the scheme uh, for as long as they have stipulated in the first place so it isn't possible to cancel no there we go no i was going to say i think it was, it was again sort of harking back to my um the the exclusion that i did it was it was the best thing that happened to me because my thing was land-based casinos and yeah. I just couldn't help but just go into them and you know whatever i would take trips to london and do oh, all sorts gosh. of things um 
yeah and it was but it was it was the best thing ever because I, I again my naivety i just thought it was one place i just thought oh i'll just get banned from this one casino that yeah. i've just been to so it's um it was great yeah. and then finding out how hard it was then to to try and reverse well, it casinos a bit, uh, forgive me because this has changed slightly but um 2017 casinos probably had membership cards or some sort of recognition and that's why they were able to to sort of spot you as you go i think some casinos i'm not 100 percent sure but without a membership card it becomes difficult it's a bit like you know the bookies at the moment it is a it is a challenge for bookies because they, do, they don't have the membership cards whereas with online with gamstock we are it's all account-based play so we do have the details that they've had to use to open an account and they've given us and as long as they match or to you know it, the matching criteria is, is slightly uh more complex than being a complete and utter match but as yeah. long as they match then we can prevent them from gambling yeah that's good and um i've got another google-based question oh! <laughs> <laughs> um so are there any casinos not on gamstar well, there are no UK licensed um, casinos or sports betting sites that aren't on Gamstop. But there are what we would, well, they are illegal. They're unlicensed, unregulated, therefore illegal sites that are available to UK players um, incorrectly mm. that are uh, the sort of... <sighs> The, uh, the, gen, the challenge at the moment for us at Gamstop um, is this, uh, this sort of area where sites that aren't on Gamstop that should not be available to UK players um, are offering uh, these really vulnerable people often um, uh, the ability to gamble um, offshore as it were but you know there are so many problems with these sites we're working hard with the gambling commission with the asa with google itself to try to and and, and ultimately with the dcms to try to get uh, to try and find a way of uh, blocking these sites from advertising on uk um uk uh, facing google if you see what i mean because they they shouldn't be um mm. but they do and it is a problem and we are aware of it and um we would say and you know to anybody and i'm sure everybody uh, that you've spoken to and, and you would agree that by gambling on these sites you are probably just going to lose everything your stake you will never get any winnings they you know they are they are literally just there as um take your money <laughs> you don't wow. know where it's going wow so it is a bit of a scary uh, area and we can't we can't exclude against those because we don't they, they don't register with, with they're not part of the uk licensing mm -hmm. um uh, regime so that's again where something like gamban comes in quite well because it can block against these, although it can't unless it knows about them so you know if they've got the url then the likes of gamban can put a block on them so that you wouldn't be able to see them as well um but they're popping up a bit so it, it is tricky and it is something that we would definitely suggest needs needs looking at from a much higher level than little old gamstop because <laughs> i was I was really amazed when you were like, there's only eight of you. Is that correct? Yeah, so our little, um, our core team in Harrogate um, is, uh, it is growing, but um, it was just two of us a couple of years ago, so just three. Uh, but now we are, uh, we're growing a bit, but we, we have a, a really good tech partner in Leeds who does a lot of the development work for, because essentially, Alex, we're a, we're a tech matching solution and that's all we're really doing we're matching data uh, and they do a great job for us and there's um, a few of them loads but a few of them that are dedicated to the gamstop project uh, and then we also have a um a contact center or our help desk that we obviously work very closely with um who man the phones and man the chats and everything like that and there's a few of them too and then we have a core team in in yorkshire who do well things like this promote what we're doing uh work on the tech uh, help with um uh, any issues that might come up with consumers who uh, want to ask questions and um they're not straightforward questions so we have somebody who's dedicated to doing that mm -hmm. so yes we are quite a small little 
team yeah, currently. I was say. It's um, yeah, it's it's just. And we're a non-profit. I should mention that. There, there so um, yeah. that's maybe why it was small team. I don't know. And yeah. we're free. Must also mention that you don't have to pay for Gamstop in any way if you're joining yeah. us. No, of course not. Of course not. Um, I feel like we're kind of coming towards, uh, you know, thinking about wrapping up. But is there is there anything yeah. else? That you would like to mention or any 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 thoughts on the future um no but that's a really good point actually because i think from our point of view we and i spend a lot of time talking to people talking to other professionals in in the the area like, like epic we mentioned earlier on um and um ygam and um the guys at gamban the guys at uh, northern gambling clinic because i think really we all need to work together to try to find um uh, ways forward to to make it easier for somebody who's finding themselves waking up one morning saying I've had enough so I think the question back to you is what do you think we could do more um, as a group of professionals to try to and and to your listeners you know how could we pro produce how could we develop things further to make it s more straightforward to get the help that you need when you're in that moment where you realize that actually things have got out of hand and you want to do something about it. It's, um, it's, it's rare that it's like, Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Put you on the spot there. Yeah, hang on a minute. Oh, I've got the answer question. Oh my word. Uh, I'm going to get one from Google for you too now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, blimey. Um, well, I, I, I think it's just echoing what you say. It'd be nice for, for sort of people to kind of get around the table and, and like you mentioned the other day in our phone call that you you know passionate about I think everybody has really good intentions and is passionate about helping others and and wanting people to you know get help to stop to get over their addiction to gamble and essentially to have a better life um, so yeah in answer to your question how could we how could how could yeah well, I don't know well anyway this it doesn't have to end here you could you could send me an email or, or if you get anybody <laughs> contacting you we're, we're always looking for people to to help us direct the way we go in the future because we know we're not perfect it's not a perfect set of um uh help mechanisms at the moment with lots there's lots to do and that's really exciting but we want to do it we want to do it right so anything mm. that um you or your listeners um have as suggestions we'd be more than happy to um to listen that'd be great is is there a is there a place that um that the listeners can get in touch or, or a website or anything like that well there is our website uh, which is www.gamstop.co.uk and that's really for registering um we are just about to do a little bit of development work on the website but if you did want to get in touch you could uh, contact us by our help desk at helpdesk at gamstop.co.uk or also info at gamstop.co.uk which is another um email address that we have for people to contact us so hopefully that'll be a way in and there's a chat function on the, on the website so you could just send you know start a chat if you wanted as well marvelous marvelous well um katie it's been a it's been a pleasure my pleasure's all mine i hope i haven't talked too much i feel like no. i have a bit <laughs> Oh I'm like, oh my word! I, that's the worst answer the, to 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 your question at the end. <laughs> I'm gonna have to sort of go and do some editing or something like Don't that. Don't you worry. It's, but it is true, though, Alex. We can only we we can only get better by listening to what people because you know I don't I've never had a gam an issue with gambling, so I'm coming at it from you know a point of a sort of professional point. But actually, we really do need to find people who are happy in their lives now and know what they're you know really uh feel that they can provide us with um you know uh advice but we can't ask people that f first join gamstop because we know that they've only just joined gamstop so we don't really want to be going oh thanks for joining gamstop uh, can you help us you know because it's, it's not the right time at no. all so no, not at all well um yeah well thanks katie and uh i hope to speak to you again soon and uh yeah thanks once again absolutely no problem at all good I'll, luck um, I'll, I'll see you soon okay <laughs> see you soon alex Cheers. bye it was a real pleasure talking to katie and hearing about gamstop 
Thanks once again to her for sharing her insight and talking so openly with us. As always, plenty of takeaways from the conversation. How easy it is to register with GAMSTOP, only taking two to three minutes on the website. How you can choose a period of self-exclusion from gambling company website and apps for six months, one year or five years, and it cannot be reversed. And pleasingly, GAMSTOP doesn't affect your credit rating. I must say, having spoken to many recovering gambling addicts, lots of them have one thing in common. They use GAMSTOP to help them stop gambling. It's a free service and it's a non-profit making company in the UK. I can't recommend them enough. Stopping gambling is one of the first major steps in recovery from a compulsion to gamble. But what about the treatment available in this country? Let's find out in the next episode of the Invisible Addiction podcast when I speak to one of the UK's top gambling psychologists.